Welcome. This is our health channel. I'm Dr. Justin Lin of Rehab and Revive Physical Therapy here in Tustin, California. I want to piggyback off of the last segment about headaches and migraines. Today I was driving into work and I was listening to ESPN radio and they were talking about concussions and all the things that are coming about and all the, the latest developments and research about concussions and why the NFL, because the NFL season is just around the corner, why these are a big issue or shouldn't be a big issue. Now this was an interesting conversation. It was uh, Rodney Harrison who was known as one of the hardest tacklers or the, the toughest, roughest players. And he was talking about his experience and how players always, because they were worried about getting paid, wanted to continue to play whether they had concussions or not. They would fool or try to get back onto the field and not tell the trainers if something, if their brain was rattled. Now, with stories of the past with guys like Steve McNair and Junior Seau who have committed suicide because of these manic depressions after their adrenaline rush years and all the head banging that has happened in their careers, that's something we really have to think about as a society, whether you know football is safe. And we all know football isn't safe. It's exciting to watch. I love watching it. I played it for four years and, and I'll tell you what, I had about two concussions myself and, and I was telling a patient earlier today that you know, even with those two concussions and hitting, getting hit in the head for four years only was enough to send me into some mild depression on several occasions of my life. So that's really something to think about. What happens to the brain chemistry? And I want to explore that a little bit later with you. You know, what happens when you get the collision or the impact goes into the head, the stuff that goes on in the bones, and we're going to get right into it. So stay tuned, as well as all the other segments that are going to come ahead. But today, we're going to talk about concussions and, and how we can really work with it and how we can try to, if you're going to play sports like that, and collision sports, soccer, anything that has to do with head blows, we really want to stay tuned and really listen to what I have to say. So I've got my skull model here I used for headaches, and we're going to use the same one for today's discussion on concussions. So we really want to think about you know, what happens when a direct blow, ha you know, hits you at all types of angles. Now, in the previous video or previous episode, we talked about these sutures. And boy, I don't know what people think, but I actually do believe that they move. And like I said, contrary to thought, they're not fused. So if you're getting a direct blow and there's some swelling on the inside, then you really have to think about, well, do the bones necessarily expand enough or not. And if they're not, then where's that pressure going? Well, it's going to build and build and press, uh, you know, against the, the, your brain cells. And, you know, when you have things like pressing your brain cells, I always tell people anything that's pressed on any normal structure, it's kind of like putting pressure on your fingernail. Now, if you put pressure on your fingernail, you don't have that much blood flow. So if you're not getting that much blood flow to your brain, what do you think is going to happen? So you got to think about well, you know, maybe those head blows, whether you're playing soccer, wrestling, boxing, and football, you know, lacrosse, or, uh, you know, rugby, you know, those are something you want to think about. So, classically, when a patient comes in with a concussion, I'm evaluating them, all the necessary stuff. You know, some of the classic symptoms of, of concussions are vomiting, tired, not having lucid thoughts, what we call is brain fog. It's almost like a whiplash uh, for people with car accidents. So you have this brain fog, your little kind of, you, you know, and headaches also persist, but, you know, lack of appetite. And so these are something you want to monitor. But, you know, I want to look at if their pupils are dilating. I want to do my screens, make sure there's no major swelling or major head injuries or neck injuries. And those are the things you want to rule out first and foremost. But let's say you've had a concussion like myself and you've had it for many years. And what happens over that long period of time? Just like I said, it's kind of like a car accident. Now, all that impact is absorbed into your body. All that kinetic force, all that kinetic force is absorbed in your body and then becomes what? 
Well, you know what? It's still forced somewhere, and it's changed into whatever potential energy, whatever you want to call it, um, and that's stored. I think you know where the joints get dislodged, kind of like these earthquake plate tectonics out here in California. You know, these things may shift. There might be a lot of, a lot of uh, compression. Um, so we really want to think about, you know, how. How, what happens, you know, uh, there. So when a patient comes in, I'm checking about, I'm checking something called a, a core first strategy or a strategy that is developed by the Institute of Physical Art, Vicki Johnson and Greg Johnson, uh, my mentors. I just want to give them their credit. Uh, but what happens is, let's say I'm trying to have you resist here. And after a neck injury or, or a concussion, a lot of the times I'm able to move you back. Now, if you took that yourself and you try to move your head, if you can sustain that hold without shakiness, then you know what? You're probably pretty good. And I like that. But if your head is unstable and you can't seem to resist, you know, tension or direct quick uh, impulses to your head, then you're missing that core first strategy at your neck. And our main muscles that protect us are these deep cervical flexors. They're called the longest collie muscles. And that just stems down here. And we really want to get these muscles working and firing alongside. That's what I'm going to do here at the clinic with anyone that comes in with a concussion. I want to make sure their eyes are tracking. You know, all that tension that's in here, we're going to do some cranial sacral therapy and really get these bones to move some more, get them a nice springy end feel is what we call it, a nice springiness to the bones so they move together and you know when it gets there's pressure it opens up and then when there's lack of pressure it closes down. So after a concussion you know you really want to think about getting it checked out, getting some physical therapy, getting these things in the right place. Now back to the ESPN story again. Now they're complaining about suing the NFL. Now, I think that's a little bit ridiculous, and this is me being on a soapbox here, but you players that are going out there and playing, you know very well what you're getting yourself into. So if you're going to play this sport, do the right thing, get checked out, make sure you're getting the right help if you need to, and make sure you also know when you to take yourself out. So stop going back on the field because you're going to make a buck, and and wrecking yourselves and then going back and trying to point the finger at someone else. So boo on you, Clinton Portis. I'm Dr. Justin Lin. Once again, this is your health, this is my health, and this is our health.